Sir, can you see now? Uh, no, sir. No? No, sir. No. So, again, I stop the sharing and then again I share. Okay, so now I'll set a window. Maybe it will work. Yes, sir. So now, sir? Yes, sir, sure. Oh, okay, okay, great. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, one and all. Sorry to disturb. Sir, yes, sir. Uh, if you present it in a full screen mode, please. Yeah, this is full screen now in my, my laptop. No, no. no, sir. So you are not able to see the full screen? No. Okay. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, it was displayed only. Only okay. after that, now go through the complete screen. That is F5 only. Now you can go through the same way. It was displayed now only. Okay, this is F5. So now you, can you see? No, sir. Not first uh, share your screen. Present now. You go to present now first. Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Wait, yes, sir. Okay. Coming. So now I'm pressing F5. Huh. Right. So please right. confirm. Not yet soon, sir. Sir, one of the other idea is in the upper area, in the this yes. saving area, uh, it is slideshow. Slide so. Go to the slide. Yeah, slide so, yes. Yes. Slide so. I'm, I'm okay. Able okay. to see you. All right. All right. Huh. <coughs> and there start from beginning huh, from beginning now just a minute sir. it will come press it again yeah I, now uh, uh, you know in my laptop it is seen full screen now I can see the full screen so their full screen is not there is it Yes, yes, sir. You are not able to see the full screen. All ah, right, sir. But uh, one more okay. So, so uh, no problem. You can. You I'm can going through one more. Yeah, attempt. Okay, ah. stop sharing. Stop presenting. And uh, now uh, I'm sharing the entire screen. Maybe it will be visible for us. Ah. So now, sir, can you see the screen? Yes, sir. The screen is visible. Okay. Now, now I'm I'm just opening. Uh, sir, one more idea is there. Yeah. Uh, other, other is percentage. So now, can you see? Yes, yes, it's coming. Okay. Yeah, perfectly. You are audible. Screen. You can continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, one and all. So, thank you very much for providing opportunity to present uh, uh, the lecture on DNA replication. So, thank you very much to GSBTM and the uh, staffs associated with the uh, program from the Virani Science College, Atmi University. So thank you very much. So uh, uh, see, I have gone through the uh, papers, last year papers. So the questions uh, from the DNA replication portion, two questions almost I've seen every year they are asking two questions and questions are very, very simple, right? So, so I request uh, students, I'll try to complete in one hour, but I, 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 try, I just request the students to ask questions in between also, no problem, right? So if you feel you can ask, you can stop me, you can ask me question in between. I will be more than happy to answer those questions. All right. <clears throat> so, so I'm, I'm presenting here. See, don't take it as a, you know, uh, lecture or something like that. I'm telling you just like the story, right? Uh, uh, only 25 or 26 slides are there. And uh, uh, every year, two questions are there. In the, and I have, I have taken a few questions also from the uh, last year's paper. So uh, here, friends, uh, this DNA replication, if we talk, so first thing we have to know, that uh, DNA, it was established as the genetic material, right? So before 1953, 
before 1953 it was very well you know 1953 i'm sorry 1953 so i'm writing something can you see the see that words please confirm i am yes. writing something on the screen so can you see yes sir okay all right all right nice so uh, before 1953 it was very well confirmed that uh, dna is genetic material right or till 1953 dna as genetic material it was confirmed right by many more scientists like you, if i if i tell you the name then uh, then frederick griffith right then every mcloyd and mccarty right every mcloyd and mccarty then uh, uh, another scientist hersey and chase right hersey and chase right so they they already proved that dna is genetic material okay protein is not the genetic material that was proved by the hersey and chase so dna is the only material which is and dna as well as the rna or nucleic acid you can say right is the genetic material so after that a big question was there so how the dna replicates right how how it passes from the parents to the progeny so that was a big question and uh, around 1953 it was very well established that uh, any molecule can be genetic material if they fulfill these three criterias right ye ye teen criterias three criterias are there to have a molecule to be a genetic material so first is the first is that they can replicate well right this is the first criteria to be a genetic material okay so dna as well as the rna they can i mean dna replicate dna can replicate very well then another criteria to be a genetic material is the stable chemically stable that structure should be right so dna is very very stable chemically dna is very stable you throw you isolate the dna and throw the dna in the any corner of lab so it will be as it is you know after few days or few week or few months right so dna is very stable and third criteria to be genetic material that should express itself right so the dna is having all the three criteria they fulfill very well so we focus here on the first first criteria which is the replication of the dna right so how they replicate okay so here we are very well acqu uh, acquainted with this you know flow chart that is the central dogma right so here in the central dogma we focus our study or we spent this one hour on the replication portion right and primarily we focus here the replication of the prokaryotes okay and we we uh, uh, finally we we compare or we we try to cover bit of eukaryotic replication at least enzyme portion right so here before cell divides any cell whether it is prokaryotic cell or eukaryotic cell it is necessary to double the genetic material that we know very well okay and uh, to double this genetic material dna should replicate of course isn't it dna should replicate and in the prokaryotes there is a stage that is called c stage of the cell cycle where the replication occurs as well as in the eukaryotes there is a phase that is called s phase right so s phase the eukaryotic dna they replicate right so they may ask question from this point also right so in which phase the dna replication takes place so you uh, remember this so c stage and here in the eukaryote s s phase of the cell cycle right okay something called i c then d these are the different phases in the prokaryotes right and here in the eukaryotes we are very well acquainted with the g1 s and then g2 so this is the phase where the dna replication occurs all right okay so now we move on to the next slide so the entire dna replication whether it is prokaryote or eukaryote the or archaea even right the mechanism of the dna replication is almost same almost right not entirely almost same okay so here 
the entire DNA replication they they includes two two you know uh, different steps or entire DNA replication occurs in two different steps. The first and very simple step is the separation of the strands, two strands of the DNA, right? Or that is called melting. In, in scientific term, we call them melting, melting of the strands, right? We know very well the DNA, double-stranded DNA are held together with the help of hydrogen bonds, right? So many hydrogen bonds are there between G and C and A and T, okay? So the breaking of the hydrogen bond is termed as melting, right? So the first is the separating two strands by melting the hydrogen bonds. Then second is the addition of nucleotides or nucleotide sequence, which is complementary to the separate region. Suppose this is melted now, right? So after melting, you know, uh, this structure suppose here, right? This is the melt, melted portion, okay? So now here, depending upon the strands, which is there in the old DNA, parental DNA, so they synthesize new DNA here, right? So this is called complementary, right? Complementary base pairing, right? Like A, A pairs with the T and G pairs with the C, right? We know very well. So these two are the basic phenomenon, right? Fundamental phenomenon which occurs during the replication, all right? Okay. So uh, here, uh, three models or, uh, you know, uh, many more models were uh, uh, there before 1953, right? In 1953, when the double standard, 1953, when the double standard model of the DNA has been given by the Watson and Crick, they also proposed the mechanism of DNA replication, right? In 1953 itself, they, they, they just hypothesized, right? During the modeling of the DNA, they hypothesized the way by which they can replicate, all right? So before that, other models has also been, uh, you know, uh, they they were uh, existing in the biological sciences. But after 53, or we can say the uh, three, four years after 53, maybe from the 1960, 60, right, it was very well established that DNA replication is semi-conservative that we know very well, right? We have, we heard many times. So here three models are, the continuous model, which is also called conservative model. Second is the very popular model that is called semi-conservative model. And third is the semi-discontinuous or dispersive model, right? So what these models are actually, this is very simple. So in the conservative, conservative model, what, what the scientists propose at that time, that if this is the parental DNA, this black one. So parental DNA, but as it is, and it produces two, I mean, double standard DNA. I mean, totally new double standard DNA like this. Okay. So this is the uh, daughter DNA and this is the parental DNA, right? Okay. So, so this is conserved. I mean, the, the parental DNA has already been conserved, right? So there has not been distributed in either of the uh, daughter strands or daughter DNA, right? So they are called continuous or the conservative. Okay. Second, we come on. Second, this is semi-conservative. So, model was proposed by the Watson and Crick, but it was not proved by the Watson and Crick. They they are they were proved by the other scientists. We come on to that slide. So here, the phenomenon is that this one strand, one parental strand, will be as it is, and another strand, which is the daughter strand, will be synthesized as per the parental strand, right? based on the complementarity, right? So here the one strand is the old strand and another is the new strand, right? Like this also. And uh, another third model was the semi-discontinuous. Semi-discontinuous model or dispersive model. See, this model was, you know, th this was even accepted after the semi-conservative model discovery also, right? But after that, it was you know, uh, discovered that actually this is the not the mode of the DNA replication. This is mode of repair actually. Okay. So in this model, what happens here, uh, you know, these are the parents, parental DNA, black one, and this light black is the new strand or daughter strand. So they, they proposed that in this model, 
this some part of the dna will be new strand and some part will be old so they they are in the form of dispersion dispersive manner right so this model call them dispersive model or semi discontinuous model right so uh, the, these are three models actually so now if we talk about the uh, model which is very accepted in the dna replication is the semi conservative model right okay so this is nothing this was proposed right this was proposed by the uh, watson crick and then it was proved by some other group of scientists right can you tell me the answer of this question this is from the last year i think i don't remember but from the last years of the question bank i have taken this question maybe recent year right last year so can you tell me the answer student uh, sir students are authorized to answer or they can they can unmute their mic uh, sir it is google meet so students can and they can also answer by the chat okay semi conservative okay all right good so this is very simple question right so uh, each daughter strand molecule contains one one parental strand and one newly strand newly synthesized strand so this is very simple question, simple question and answer is semi conservative replication so c would be the correct answer okay okay all right so now this model this model was proposed by the watson crick but this model was proved by two scientists meselson and stall right they did a very very elegant experiment okay and then they finally proved that yes dna replication is semi conservative all right so what they did just you try to understand in the form of story don't don't bother about the you know two clumsy figures okay so uh, see uh, bacteria see we, what we discussed is totally about the bacterial dna right bacterial dna replication so please keep in mind so here what they did versus and stall they took bacteria right and we know very well when you grow bacteria right in any uh, uh, flask or on plate petri plate wherever right so it needs some medium right and nitrogen carbon right so nitrogen is one of the one of the you know nutrient source so nitrogen we put them in different forms right so we supply nitrogen so here what missiles and stall did so they took nitrogen source in which the n15 isotope of nitrogen is there right n15 see n14 and n15 n14 n15 two different isotopes of nitrogen are there maybe others also but here we are talking about n14 and 15 so 15 is the heavy isotope of the nitrogen so you please remember it uh, i don't know whether you can see or not the lower lower panel this is the heavy isotope right so this is the, not the radio isotope right so n15 is not the radio isotope this is the heavy isotope of the n14 so the messels and stall what they did uh, just a minute okay okay just a minute i am again making full full screen okay so messels and stall they grew the bacterium first in the n15 containing medium for several generation right what they did they they grew bacterium in the n15 medium for several generation right so what happened the bacterium the grown bacterium suppose overnight they grown so all bacterium almost all bacterium they have now n15 in their dna right so several generation several generation means from long time they grew in the n15 medium so this red one is the n15 containing dna right so all the dna will be n15 containing right then they took bacterium and just grew them for 20 minutes that means one generation so here what they have seen this i mean 20 minutes in n14 containing medium right n14 containing medium so what they have seen one strand they are from the parent this red one which is n15 containing and another one is the red one which is n14 right in both the dna right so how they have seen so they have seen by the by a technique that is called ultra centrifugation right 
and in ultra centrifugation there is a very there, there is a type that is called uh, density gradient ultra centrifugation right so what they did they took cesium chloride cscl right cesium chloride for making the gradient right and since they are density gradient centrifugation so depending upon the density they can separate the dna here right so this is heavy dna so it will come at the bottom right but this is the hybrid kind of dna right so they will come little bit above to the n15 n15 band so you can see here this is the n15 n14 hybrid dna and again they grew for 20 minutes right means total 40 minutes right so when they grew them for next 20 minutes so now they have found some population which is n14 n14 dna right some of them are n14 n15 hybrid dna right so they confirmed here in the bands right so this is the band which is n14 n14 ye dekho top pe sabse upar hai right or yeah here n15 n14 bands are there this is hybrid dna right so according to this experiment mrs and stall they proved finally that uh, dna replication is semi conservative right which was proposed by the watson prick all right now the same thing right which is also proved in the eukaryotic system that dna replication is semi conservative so that was proved by a, a group of scientists which uh, in which the taylor and woods right and their team leader was taylor taylor and kulix right taylor and kulix who proved that dna replication in eukaryotes also is semi conservative and he took vicia fava right vicia fava as a you know uh, i mean dna of the vicia fava to do the experiment right this is the beam okay and they used radioactive thymidine dekho question aise hi puchega yahan se so what they used so treated thymidine yahan pe bolte hain kya bolte hain treated thymidine treated thymidine right or simply the radioactive thymidine they used then which which model organism was there so vicia fava and who did taylor and woods or taylor and kulix right so finally in prokaryotes as well as in the eukaryotes it has been very well proved that dna replication is semi conservative all right so now now you just take the screenshot and you try to solve this question right on its own right so this is the question in which bacteria has been grown for 80 minutes right so they are asking uh, what what kind of dna or what is the proportion of the hybrid dna as well as the light dna right okay this is very simple question you do on its own okay so now we talk about so what exactly the mechanism of the dna replication is right so everything is now established so now the scientific community they now indulge into the mechanism how the dna replication actually occurs inside the cell so we we hear uh, uh, first of all uh, focus our study on the energetics so this is the reaction this is the reaction this is the dn dntp this is the uh, dnmp this is the you know already polymerized nucleotides and here with the help of enzyme we come on to these enzymes later on so with the help of enzyme so one by one nucleotides has been added so here this is n right so n plus 1 added and here from this dntps this pyrophosphate has been released so 180 from from this dntp one phosphate has been utilized or one nucleotide we can say later on right added and here the pyrophosphate has been released and this bond breaking process here they cleaved one uh, you know uh, bond right from the in the triphosphate and they released approximately 3.5 minus 3.5 kcal energy per mole okay so minus means spontaneous reaction this one right so delta g here is the minus 3.5 kcal but this energy this amount of energy is really insufficient for the replication of the dna to carry out the replication of dna this amount is not sufficient okay so then the question is what the other or from where the extra energy comes from 
So extra energy, actually it comes from the breaking of this pyrophosphate. So this is PPI, pyrophosphate. So here an enzyme, pyrophosphatase is there inside the cell, right? Enzyme pyrophosphatase is there. And this pyrophosphatase will break this pyrophosphate into the inorganic phosphate, right? And in this process here, they release approximately 4.5 kilocalorie. Here it is given in the joule and we can uh, write here in the uh, kilocalorie. So it would be approximately minus 4 point something, 4.2 kilocalorie, 4.2 kilocalorie. Okay. So see, now you can add this 3.5 and 4.2 kilocalorie, right? So 4.2 kilocalorie energy, see here written, it is written 4.5 kilocalorie. So 4.5 kilocalorie and 3.5 kilocalorie. So it is approximately more than 7 kilocalorie, right? 7.5 kilocalorie energy, this free energy. So this amount of gives free energy is sufficient enough to run the DNA replication. Okay. All right. This is minus 7 kilocalorie energy. This is all right. That DNA can be replicated inside the cell or nucleotides can be added one by one. Okay. This is the energetics. Now, another thing. So this DNA replication process is irreversible. See, this runs in only one direction. Irreversible here. Okay. So uh, why it is irreversible? Because if you look at the equilibrium constant of this reaction, so it is approximately 105. So this is too high, right? So this much of high K equilibrium will effectively make them irreversible. So this DNA replication process is entirely irreversible process. So the question two three questions you can get. The first question is here you have to keep energetics. Energy where comes from? And another pyrophosphate. Pyrophosphate it will break the pyrophosphate into the uh, inorganic phosphate, right? So the excess amount of energy uh, can be obtained from the pyrophosphate. The pyrophosphate is and another why it is irreversible. So K equilibrium is too high, right? So this is irreversible. So this is the mechanism of the DNA replication, right? Now, now the next question is what is the chemistry of the DNA synthesis, right? So the chemistry here involves or it, it requires two key substrates, right? Do chiches ko chahiye, the chemistry ki baat karen. First is the deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate that means they require dntps right isko kya chahiye dntp chahiye pehli cheez aur dusri cheez primer template junction they required i mean always for dna replication if this is the template dna so they need to have this junction right without this junction the dna replication won't start it right ye aisa chahiye isko I mean, this double stranded and single stranded confirmation here it is here single stranded and up to here this is double stranded confirmation, right? So this arrangement should be required, okay? Like this, see here. So here the three prime OH should be there, right? And uh, uh, this is the this is something which is called primer. We come on to this point in the next slides, right? So this is the deoxyribonucleotide phosphate. Or nucleoside, nucleoside triphosphate. If you are calling triphosphate, then it should be nucleoside. So see here, you just focus on the things which is called alpha, beta, and gamma phosphate. Okay. So in chemistry, we we uh, have gone through already the the phosphate which is very near to the core of this chemical, right? Or the group. So this is called alpha, right? This is alpha. This is called beta. And next is called gamma, right? So alpha, beta, gamma, three phosphates are there. Okay. And what we have uh, discussed earlier, the bond has been broken from here, right? This one. Yeah, so bond two tajo pyrophosphate nikla. So this is the pyrophosphate. Okay, we come on to the next slides. Okay. So these two requirements are there for the completion of the DNA replication. So see here, this is the template and this is the primer. Right. And uh, here, this is the three prime. I mean, this is the requirement for the DNA replication. Right. So this primer is required. We come on to the next slide. So how the primer is loaded and from where it comes. So once the primer is here and primer is having three prime OH. So this three prime OH will attack onto the alpha phosphate. Right. So something you, you should 
uh, studied in the chemistry, which is called nucleophile and electrophile, right? So OH here, three prime OH is a very strong nucleophile, right? They are having two lone pair of electron. Okay. So these lone pair of electrons makes them strong nucleophile, and these nucleophiles will attack onto the alpha phosphate, which is a very good electrophile. Electrophile means electron deficient. Okay. बहुत सारे इसके कारण है उसमें हम अभी नहीं जाते हैं राइट सो हियर दिस थ्री प्राइम ओ एच मेक्स अफिलिक अटैक ऑन टू द अल्फा फॉस्पिट एंड दे फॉर्म अ न्यू बॉन्ड लाइक दिस हियर द न्यू फॉस्फेट और फॉस्फोडाइस्टर लिंकेज हैज बीन फॉर्म एंड दिस न्यूक्लियोटाइड हैज बीन ज्वाइंट हियर विद द हेल्प ऑफ हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड दिस हाइड्रोजन बॉन्ड ओके सो दिस इज द केमिस्ट्री ऑल राइट ठीक है now we come on to the process of the dna replication okay so you can interrupt me in between jahan bhi kahin pe question ho you can stop me okay so now we uh, try to understand the process of the dna replication so entire biological process of the dna replication we divide them into the three different phases okay so these three different phases are just for the convenience of our study aisa kuch nahi ki cell mein aise teen deewar hote hain bane hue aur teen alag alag compartments mein hote hain nothing like that so just for the convenience we uh, divided them into three different phases okay so first is the initiation this is very very important right here we spent much of the time for our discussion then the elongation right and then termination we discuss okay so see here the bacterial dna bacterial dna replication it starts from a single point right bacterial genomic dna or chromosomal dna is circular we know very well right kaisa hota hai this is circular circular dna is there and in the bacterial dna right there is a point which is called orec right here is a point that is called orec right origin of replication right this is called orec right see c word aaya kahan se scientist ke naam pe this is uh, uh, i don't know spelling is correct or not c r a i g i think I, I, like that right craig i mean who discovered this origin of replication after him it is named so this is orec origin of replication hai na tum bologe na origin of replication bol rahe ho sir aur likh rahe ho orec to c for uh, Craig or Craig, ऐसा करके साइंटिस्ट का नेम ओके सो दिस इज द ओरिजिन ऑफ रेप्लीकेशन फ्रॉम हियर द रेप्लीकेशन स्टार्ट एंड दिस इज दिस इज प्रेजेंट ओनली वंस आई मीन एक साइड ओनली वन ओरिसी इज देयर इन द इंटायर जीनोमिक डी एन ए राइट सो डी एन ए रेप्लीकेशन स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द ओरिजिन ऑफ रेप्लीकेशन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी फोकस ऑन टू द ओरिजिन ऑफ रेप्लीकेशन सो वंस द the dna replication started then they move on to both directions right we come on to the next slide so first we focus on the orec so this is the structure of orec here this complex structure so don't worry about looking this complex structure right so this is very simple so orec this is approximately 245 base pair right ye 245 base pair ki hoti hai right orec in which some Uh, you know consensus sequences are there consensus means conserve consensus kaise bolte hain conserve ko so some consensus sequences are there so here the consensus sequences are highlighted by this brown color 1 2 3 and another consensus sequence which is highlighted here by the uh, blue right okay so these consensus sequences is categorized into two different categories this brown one is categorized into 13 mers right these are called 13 mers 13 nucleotide ke ho, hote hain right 13 nucleotides ke so 13 mer right this is the sequence right don't remember the sequence no need to remember but these are the consensus sequence consensus means in in different bacteria the same sequences almost same sequences are there so this is 13 mer sequence and these are blue one is 9 mer sequences right ye kaisa hai 9 mer sequences 9 base pair ke sequences and they are called r1 r5 r2 and r4 okay see this 13 mer sequences are called due right due is nothing but the duplex unwinding element 
उसको क्या बोला गया ड्यूप्लेक्स अनवाइंडिंग एलिमेंट एंड यू कैन सी हियर दे आर एटी रिच ये कैसा है एटी रिच है दिस सिक्वेंस इज एटी रिच ऑल राइट ये एटी रिच है दिस इज एटी रिच वेर एज द अनदर सिक्वेंस विच इज नाइन मर इज कॉल डी ए आर राइट डी एन ए प्रोटीन बाइंडिंग रीजन डी एन ए प्रोटीन दिस इज नेम्ड आफ्टर डी एन ए प्रोटीन बाइंडिंग रीजन एंड दीज आर द रीजन्स वेर विच इज कॉल्ड आर वन आर फाइव दीज आर द रीजन पर्टिकुलरली द आर वन आर टू एंड आर फोर आर वेरी वेरी हैविंग वेरी वेरी हाई एफिनिटी विद द डी एन ए प्रोटीन राइट okay all right and regions they they uh, name them ihf fis right okay uh, if you i have not acquainted with then leave it okay to so just yahan pe humko yaad kya rakhna hai these are the nine mer sequences okay and here the dna a protein will bind that's why they are called dar right and this is the the structure of the origin of replication right ori c we call them okay so this orec this orec sorry we are in the initiation part so here just i i uh, sketched the same diagram here this is the 13 mer region and this green one is the 4 mer re 9 mer region right ye green wala 4 mer region so for all to start the dna replication first of all a protein which is called dna a protein see uh, you focus on the different proteins because i have seen the question they are asking most of the question from the enzymes which are involved in the dna replication right so pehla protein kaun sa hua hum last mein sab ko summarize kar denge yadi time raha to so first is the dna a protein so this dna a protein it it binds to the r1 jaise humne bola tha r1 r4 in sab se bahut affinity hoti hai right so this dna a protein will bind to the nine mer region okay and when they bind here approximately 20 units see 20 number kitne hote hain 20 20 units of the small dna a protein they will bind to these regions and when they bind then this region nine mer region will form a loop like structure like this see just i'm i'm sketching the dna by a single uh, you know line so if this is the 13 mer region so here they form a loop like structure right when they bound with the 20 units of the dna a protein right like this so see uh, this this you know uh, uh, coiling around the dna with the help of dna a protein it leads to the strain on the 13 mer region ye kya karta hai 13 mer region pe ek ek you know uh, 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 strain dalta hai right on the 13 mer region and that strain finally leads to the denaturation or opening of the double stranded dna okay we come on to that point so first thing is dna coils around the protein right here from the nine mer region right this is the nine mer region okay and they induces a topological stress on the 13 mer region okay they provided a topological stress on the 13 mer region and here as we know now the 13 mer region is 80 rich right this is 80 rich and 80 rich we know very well between a and t only two hydrogen bonds are there so that can be broken very easily as compared to the gc so nature has provided 80 here okay so these 13 mer region will now get denatured or that super coiling or topological strain that causes not super coiling here that coiling coiling of the nine mer region that causes denaturation at the 80 rich region right which is 13 mer region right and denaturation takes place like this right so now we come on to this figure okay so here this dna a protein binding it requires atp right or adp so always dna a protein is loaded with the atp either atp or adp right so here they require atp so see uh, you remember the initiation is the only process or only uh, segment where the dna replication needs atp right otherwise they fulfill their energy requirement from the from the 7 kilocalorie per mole which is obtained after the breaking down of the 
DNTPs, right? DNTPs and after that pyrophosphate. Okay. So here they are loaded. I mean DNA protein loaded with the help of ATP or ADP. Okay. So once the uh, 13 mer region is denatured, right? This region is denatured or open, right? So hydrogen bonds, remaining hydrogen bonds here is broken down by the another protein which is called DNA B protein. See, this is the DNA B protein, this green one. So this, as soon as this, you know, unwinding takes place, denaturation takes place, or we can say this protein, DNA B protein, this helps in the unwinding. See, uh, the, these are the different proteins which work simultaneously. Right? They are working simultaneously. Okay. So as soon as the DNA protein binds, Almost at the same time, DNA B protein will bind and DNA B protein works as helicase, right? This works as helicase. So what they do, they, they, if, if some hydrogen bond remains there, they break, they break those hydrogen bonds and then they are responsible for the breaking of another hydrogen bonds, which will lead to the opening of the another region of the DNA, right? So this protein, which is called DNA B protein, which is also called helicase or it works as helicase actually, right? And uh, this protein always bind with the DNA C protein, right? This is called helicase loader. This red protein is called helicase loader. So this after loading, this DNA C protein will fall off. So only the helicase will be here, right? So helicase, see, you always remember we have now a uh, if we sketch the, the the bacterial DNA, so the figure will be something like this. Okay. See, one helicase will bind here and one helicase will bind here, right? Because DNA is now unwinded, right? So this helicase will open the helix in this direction and this helicase will open the helix in this direction. All right. Okay. Okay. So DNA B protein always binds with the DNA C protein. All right. Now, once the, uh, you know, uh, once the uh, DNA is denatured or small portion of the DNA is denatured, which is called replication I. That's why this is called replication I. Okay. I you. Right. This is replication I. So this is called replication I. Okay. And if you cut the replication I, just if replication I has been cleaved, right? If you cleave, then it will become replication fork. It's going to look replication fork you like this. So one replication I is made up of two replication fork, right? Okay. So here now in the replication I, another protein has been recruited during the initiation. Okay. So the next protein is the DNA G protein, right? DNA G protein, which is called primase or which works as primase. It primes the, or it, it makes the uh, small segment of primer, right? So first of all, it binds to the uh, template strands with the help of Unwindage or unwindage means helicase, we can say here. So see here, this green one is the helicase. So with the help of this helicase, right, this helicase, DNA G protein will be, DNA G protein will bind. So here this DNA G protein will bind. This is called primase. So here also the helicase is there, right? Yahan pe bhi helicase hai. Okay, dono end pe. So this recruited, DNA G protein has been recruited and then they synthesize a small primer. And primer is nothing but the short RNA sequences. So now you remember the mechanism of the DNA replication. We have seen, we have studied earlier that it always requires this kind of confirmation, right? I mean, this double stranded and single stranded confirmation is required for start the DNA replication by the DNA polymerase, right? So abhi tak yaha DNA polymerase ne aaya hai, abhi tak kya chal rahi hai. So this DNA G protein, this DNA G protein will bind with the uh, with the help of this uh, helicase. See, if you if you uh, uh, make a fine tune of this helicase, this helicase is actually hexameric sequence. Okay, ये ऐसा कुछ hexameric होता है, right? 
you here also this is hexameric protein right and uh, that will help in the attachment of the help primase right so primer synthesis takes place this blue one is the primer right this is rna sequence short rna sequence all right so now almost everything i mean the preparation is ready priming has been done राइट प्राइमर बना दिया गया जो हमको डीएनए रेप्लिकेशन के लिए रिक्वायरमेंट चाहिए था वो रिक्वायरमेंट है ये दूसरी रिक्वायरमेंट थी पहली रिक्वायरमेंट थी डीएनटीपी सो ऑफ कोर्स सेल के पास सफिशिएंट अमाउंट ऑफ डीएनटीपीज आर देयर ओके देन ओनली दे कैन रेप्लिकेट सो व्हेन बोथ द रिक्वायरमेंट्स हैज बीन फुलफिल्ड देन द मेन प्लेयर राइट मेन प्लेयर इज द डीएनए पॉलीमरेज 3 राइट सो डीएनए पॉलीमरेज 3 इज अगेन अ मल्टी सब यूनिट एंजाइम right many more subunits are there in the dna polymerase 3 right we we have the table in the last portion of the presentation so we'll have look to that also so here the dna polymerase 3 they are loaded onto this site because everything is ready so loading has been done by another protein complex that is called beta clamp okay beta clamp so beta clamp is always attached with the dna polymerase 3 right and this beta clamp it loads the dna polymerase onto this preparation jo pehle se preparation priming wagera ho ke rahi hai so this has been loaded see here two units of the dna polymerase has been loaded here okay on both the strands all right i mean both the uh, side of the replication fork so here now the dna polymerase comes and dna polymerase will now synthesize or they recruit the new nucleotide they join the new new nucleotide as per the template strands right this is a very very great enzyme right and this enzyme was discovered by korenberg right korenberg right nobel, nobel prize they got nobel prize for that korenberg that right? konberg right so konberg they 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 discovered this enzyme and uh, uh, this is the enzyme or the real enzyme which is responsible for the entire replication of the dna in the prokaryotes right apart from that other enzymes has also been discovered in fact dna polymerase was polymerase one was the first enzyme which was discovered after the second after the third but it has it has been found that third is the main enzyme which is responsible for real real or real enzyme which is responsible for the dna replication because there processivity is too much right high processivity is there right processivity okay this is the term processivity okay processivity is the terminology which is used for the 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 process in which before the fall of the enzyme how much of the nucleotides they has been recruited or how many nucleotides they has been polymerized right so the processivity of the dna polymerase 3 is lacks of the nucleotide right so that's why this is the main enzyme for the dna replication so till here this is the initiation right so initiation has been completed now the entire dna replication it enters into the elongation phase right so we come on to the elongation before that we have this slide that uh, as we discussed prokaryotes they have only one origin of replication see this is the only one origin of replication this is the electron micrograph right and here in this panel this is shown for the eukaryotic dna so this is the eukaryotic chromosome and in eukaryotes many more origin of replication would be there right kafi sare isme origin of replication honge right so here the the different origin of replication finally merge themselves right merge themselves and they synthesize the dna entirely i mean because the eukaryotic dna are very very large in size right length of the length of the eukaryotic dna is very very long so they they need more of the origin of replication as compared to the prokaryotic system right and prokaryotic dna are small so they won't require much of the origin of replication okay all right so now this is another question which is there in your paper so uh, the enzyme that uh, relieves 
torsional i mean i think this is a uh, spelling mistake torsional strain while the double stranded dna is being unwound right so uh, see uh, here what is the thing that uh, when the when the helicase this helicase is hexameric helicase they moves in these directions right they will create a super coiling actually right this is another topic of the discussion but if you open the double helical dna right if you open from any point of the double helical dna so to the to both side of that right to both side of that replication i so dna will be super coiled right and the super coiling is not good for the dna because if it is not relieved then dna will be broken down randomly okay so for relieving the systematic super coiling right and particularly here the negative super coiling occurs right kaisa hoga yahan pe ye bhi dhyan rakhna this is important for you right negative super coiling right so negative super coiling hone se kya hoti hai ki ye i mean jab bhi aap open karoge dna ko that leads to the negative super coiling so negative super coiling may lead to the random breaking down of the dna right to uske liye kya karte hain ki there is another set of enzyme that is called gyrase right g y r a s e gyrase gyrase ya fir isko hum log topo isomerase bhi bolte hain topo isomerase right two different kind of topo isomerases are there topo isomerase 1 2 right it will be covered by some other uh, faculty member right so here the enzyme which is called gyrase right so gyrase is the enzyme which will which will relieve the super coiling or negative super coiling from the dna right okay so here now you can find the answer right so here the answer is the dna gyrase all right simple question here right now another phase of the dna replication is the elongation right so now we enter into the elongation the elongation is very simple so so the dna polymerase that that now takes the entire charge of the elongation in their hand and one by one the the dntps these are the dntps they will come at the site of uh, double uh, double stranded as well as the single stranded dna junction so this is the junction right and uh, depending upon the template strand the base pair has been selected right so this base pair has been selected right suppose a it it uh, it is selected by the t or exact base pairing will be carried out and uh, these selectivity and the other 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 things is there in the dna polymerase itself so dna polymerase is a very fantastic enzyme they they now uh, carry each and every responsibility responsibility after the initiation right so now the dna polymerase suppose this is the dna polymerase so dna polymerase now now select the appropriate nitrogenous base here right or dntps and they catalyze the reaction by the 3 prime oh right so catalysis has also been you know uh, carried out by the dna polymerase with the help of 3 prime oh and same mechanism nucleophilic attack will be there on the alpha phosphate and that's how the the complementary dna has been synthesized right so the dna synthesis always takes place in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction right 5 prime se 3 prime direction ki taraf hota hai because it needs 3 prime oh always the required 3 prime oh because the mechanism is the the nucleophilic attack right onto the alpha phosphate which is a good electrophile see here they can they may ask another question so here you know uh, the mechanism which we read in the chemistry which is called sn2 and sn1 right so here the sn2 reaction takes place dhyan rakhna ye sn2 jo mechanism yahan pe reaction ki that is sn2 reaction okay the sn2 mechanism has been followed see this would be a very good question for i mean your level okay 
तो एस एन टू मैकेजम यहाँ पे फॉलो करता है राइट सो इन दैट वे द इंटायर न्यूक्लियोटाइड द इंटायर न्यूक्लियोटाइड जो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द बैक्टीरिया दिस इज फोर पॉइंट सिक्स और टू यू नो अप्रोक्सीमेटली फोर इंटू टें पर सिक्स बेस पेयर राइट सो दिस विल बी दिस विल बी कैरीड आउट इन बोथ द डायरेक्शन एंड द द फाइनली the dna it enters into the termination so here uh, before going to the termination we we uh, discuss about some other protein which is called ssb we forgot to discuss ssb so see once the dna dna has been denatured another protein which is called ssb these blue proteins are ssb right ssb single stranded binding protein right so these single stranded binding proteins it will prevent the renaturation of the dna because renaturation is a automatic process spontaneous process right so uh, tetrameric form of this enzyme so this enzyme ssb is the tetrameric enzyme which will bind to any one of the strand right not on the both strand any one strand of the dna and it prevent the dna to anneal right to make the base pairing again okay so here these are the ssbs see now see here this is just the uh, summary of the elongation so this is the enzyme uh, dna gyrase or topoisomerase 2 right uh, which will relieve the negative supercoiling right and this is the dna b protein hexameric protein hai ye right and uh, dna b protein uh, which is attached to another protein which is called dna primase it will synthesize primer right and uh, uh, these are the ssbs okay and uh, here the uh, dna polymerase it synthesizes now another question another problem with the dna replication is that here they they have the dna polymerase suppose this is the dna polymerase ye um, dna polymerase bana raha this is dna polymerase right so if you you know uh, when you discuss when you Uh, look at the structure of the dna polymerase so they are having the two two core core subunit right core subunit and these two core subunit will 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 lead to the polymerization of both the strands simultaneously right so what they do actually in one strand they will synthesize dna in a continuous manner suppose suppose we are we are just uh, uh uh here just i'm erasing this okay then we can draw the fresh diagram here okay so see here dna polymerase is there so dna polymerase what they do they move in the direction in which the 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 dna b protein or helicase will move see uh, this is just one fork right this structure which is shown here is one fork right so this is one fork and here the dna b protein or helicase is attached and this protein is moving in this direction right okay and our dna polymerase is here suppose these are the two subunits i'm just making here the two subunits this is one subunit of the dna polymerase and this is the another subunit of the dna polymerase right both are joined together so this this subunit core subunit will synthesize one strand and this strand is in the direction of the denaturation or unwinding of the dna right so this strand will be continuous right so this strand will be continuous but this because they always follow the direction which is 5 prime to 3 prime so this is the 5 prime and this would be the 3 prime so this is in the direction in which the denaturation takes place right or unwinding of the dna takes place but for this core subunit the direction would be opposite right right so what they do they are making a loop like structure right i i i did not mentioned here that figure because it will make more complicated so what they do they will make i mean this strand of the dna they will make a loop like a structure right they will make a loop like a structure like this right and they will synthesize dna in a small fragment because they have to they have to maintain the direction also 5 prime to 3 prime direction right 
as well as they have to move in the direction in which the helicase will make the dna uh, helix separated right so for doing uh, you know to to fulfill both the criteria so here the strands has been synthesized in the small fragments right on the other strand of the dna on the other strand of the template they can able to synthesize the dna which is there in the small fragments right so one strand they synthesize is continuous and another strand they are synthesizing is discontinuous not the continuous why again i am telling you that because they maintain dna polymerase they maintain this they maintain the movement in this direction one thing as well as they also maintain the direction of synthesis of dna and they are always in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction okay so always the primers are there so priming enzyme primase is there so they always synthesize primer and they can form dna in a small small patches so this continuous strand this continuous strand and this continuous strand are synthesized so this continuous strand is called leading strand right this is called leading strand and this discontinuous strand is called lagging strand right lagging strand and since this was discovered by okazaki japanese scientist got nobel prize for that okay so they are also termed as okazaki fragments these fragments are called okazaki fragment okay so lagging strand and leading strand has been synthesized okay and you don't uh, you 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 remember these are the these green portions are the rna primers right rna primers which are synthesized by the primase okay so in this manner the entire dna has been synthesized right entire dna has been synthesized okay in both directions right in this direction one dna polymerase is taking charge and this direction another dna polymerase takes charge right and finally they synthesize entire dna now they enter into the termination portion right so during the termination okay during the termination now what happens from the origin of replication the the replication fork moves in this direction and this direction this you can suppose clockwise direction or clockwise fork movement this is the counter clockwise or anti clockwise fork direction right so just in front of the origin of replication right here this is the origin of replication and just in front of that here right scientists they found some specific some tentative sequences some conserved sequences are there right and those sequences are called ter sequences kya bolte hain usko ter sequences t e r termination sequences so termination sequences are very unique sequences right how so what happens in the termination just i'm changing the color so that it will be uh, i'm taking red one no yeah. okay blue okay so what happens in these ter sequences another protein which is called tus protein right on these sequences a protein which is called tus protein will bind right tus protein so they are forming tuster complexes right so after joining of tus with the ter they form tus ter complex right tuster complex so these tuster complexes are responsible for the termination so how they work actually so here you can uh, see these are the ter sequences so ter sequences two different i mean the sequences has been categorized into the two types the the portion which is flat here i am i am just coloring with the blue right so these are the sequences which promotes the synthesis of the dna or replication we can say but this opposite sequence here this notch they will prevent the dna replication okay samajh gaya main kya bol raha hu ki ye jo main yahan pe thoda enlarge kar deta hu suppose this is the region right this is the region i am making one ter sequence right uh, diagrammatically right this is the sequence which will promote and after that whatever the sequence is uh, which is represented like this right so this is they promote the replication and they try to stop the replication right hinder the replication so say 
when this replication fog will move from here to here so these blue region they will promote them right and they i mean they are not encountering with this region right ye direction wala so they are they keep on moving on they keep on moving keep on moving but when they come here right so they will encounter this region first see ye wala stop wala region all right so as soon as this will come here the replication will be stopped right so here the counter clockwise fog when they come across these three ter sequences right then they only stop right so that's why this is called counter clockwise fork trap right so replication fork has been trapped okay similarly the clockwise fork has been trapped here right this is the clockwise fork trap okay and whatever fork whatever whatever fork trap will get first or whatever uh, you know replication fork will encounter with the fork trap first immediately the replication will be stopped over there so it is not necessary to stop both the fork during the course of termination any one of the fork any one of the either clockwise or counter clockwise fork when encounters with the with their fork trap the the replication will be immediately stopped over there right so see uh, here the replication has been stopped by these tester complexes and thus thus protein will always bind to the ter ter region right here they bound okay ter ter ter, ter sequences so finally the dna which is which is synthesized newly synthesized strain which come out right as well uh, and we we uh, earlier discussed that dna replication is semi conservative so here the two dna two entire genome has been made right in which one is parental dna and one is the new dna so both will both will be you know uh, made like this this i mean two rings when you uh, keep like this right so they come they they form like this so they are joined together and uh, in the biological sciences we we uh, call them concatenomers like a structure right concatenomer right or catenated dna isn't it so this concatenomers after the uh, completion of the dna replication then topoisomerase comes again right here it is written topoisomerase 4 right so topoisomerase comes and then they relieve both the genome to the separate entity of the genome okay so that's how it is stopped so we have discussed the initiation then elongation and then termination of the prokaryote right so likewise the entire dna replication has been completed in the prokaryotes right so this is the overall replication overall repli overall replication process we mentioned here but before that we uh, have to discuss something more that uh, once the elongation completed and they enters into the termination another very important thing which is to remove the primer because the okajake fragments are still associated with the primers which is rna primer right and uh, here also one primer would be there hai na yadi aap pehle dekhoge to yahan bhi ek primer hai this is the rna primer right so all the primers has to be removed first job and second job which is supposed to do to join the dna ये जो यहाँ पे फ्रेगमेंट्स होंगे ओकाजा के फ्रेगमेंट्स दे हैव टू जॉइन टुगेदर राइट सो हियर टू अनदर एंजाइम्स रिक्वायर्ड वन इज कॉल्ड डीएनए पॉलीमरेज वन राइट सी वी वी हैड डिस्कशन अबाउट द डीएनए पॉलीमरेज थ्री राइट वी हैव अ टेबल फाइनली सो डीएनए पॉलीमरेज थ्री इज द मेन एंजाइम व्हिच इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर द रेप्लिकेशन ऑफ द डीएनए because of very very high processivity and dna polymerase one they are required for the synthesis of very small fragment of the dna very small stretch of the dna right so here the dna polymerase one it removes the primer first ye jo rna ki primer hai it will be removed first 
and then with the help of dna polymerase 1 they synthesize dna as per the template strand right so ab dekho yahan pe kya hota hai ki they use this end as a 3 prime oh here right they will use this 3 prime oh ye 3 prime oh ko ye consider karega and then they fill this gap but they won't be able to form the phosphodiester bond because two gaps are always there say i don't know whether you can see or not okay now you can see here so see now they they synthesize the dna but the thing is that gap is still there right so gap is not fulfilled by the or gap has not been uh, made or this bond has not been made by the dna polymerase one so another enzyme which is called dna ligase right so dna ligase now comes into the picture and then they form this phosphodiester bond ye phosphodiester bond ko yahan pe bana diya right so how the event is so first of all the dna polymerase one it removes the rna primer and in place of that they synthesize the dna by utilizing the 3 prime oh of the previous dna right previous dna fragment jaise yahan pe is dna ke 3 prime oh ko use karega and then they synthesize isn't it okay and finally the gap the gap that means that is the formation of the phosphodiester bond so that is done by the that is made by the dna ligase so likewise the the okajake fragments all okajake fragments has been joined together and the dna now is the in the continuous manner right so now both the strands are continuous so two separate and then they enters into the termination right so once the termination is completed then they form the two separate entity of the genome right now we have 10 minutes approximately right so now we discuss and just recap the things and particularly here the enzymes which are associated with, associated with the dna replication so many more enzymes has been involved right so first enzyme what we have seen is the we have seen is the helicase so this is the enzyme helicase that is also called tropoisomerase 2 gyrase unwindase right so what they do they they unwind the dna right then another protein which is called ssb ssb uh, single strand binding protein so they the tetrameric protein they bind to the only one strand of the dna and they prevent the renaturation of the dna right and helicase is the hexameric protein okay then another protein which is called primase they comes and primase they are priming the dna i mean they they synthesize the primer rna primer right so our RNA primer has been synthesized and uh, after that DNA polymerase 1 is there. DNA polymerase 1, they, they remove the RNA primer and then they synthesize the DNA at that place. Okay, ligase, they ligate the DNA. I mean two, two different Okajaki fragments or they form the phosphodiester linkage over there. Okay, apart from that DNA polymerase 3, that is the main enzyme which is taking care of all the responsibility and they are also called DNA dependent DNA polymerase, right? They are called DNA dependent DNA polymerase or actually this is the DNA polymerase 3, right? So other enzymes has also been discussed here in this, uh, you know, uh, discussion. So just I'm writing the name, right? So the proteins which are involved in the uh, replication are uh, DNA. A pro I mean initiation. I mean, initiation ki baat kar rahe and just you recall the function DNA A protein, right? So DNA A protein, they they are uh, the protein which requires in the initiation. They bind. They these are the protein which will bound to the nine mer regions, right? Of the OREC. Then DNA B protein. DNA B protein, which comes along with the C protein, DNA C protein, I mean B and C, right? So B here acts as helicase. B is the helicase. Jo humne pe likha hai, helicase. So this is nothing but the DNA B protein, right? Then uh, after that, DNA G protein comes, right? And DNA G protein, kise bol rahe the? they are primase or primer, jo bana raha tha, they are DNA G protein. This is uh, helicase, is the 
डीएनए बी प्रोटीन राइट एंड देन डीएनए गायरेज वी हैव हैड डिस्कशन लाइगेज पॉलीमरेज राइट सो लाइक वाइज वी सिंथेसाइज द एंटायर स्टैंड बाय डीएनए सो नाउ यू कैन सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन जस्ट टू ट्राई टू सॉल्व इन प्रोकैरियोट्स द लैगिंग स्टैंड प्राइमर हैज बीन रिमूव्ड बाय सिंपल क्वेश्चन सो आंसर वुड बी डीएनए पॉलीमरेज 1 right so primer has been removed by the dna polymerase one all right okay so now here is the comparison see this is this would be a very important slide for you okay so here the dna polymerase one dna polymerase two dna polymerase three has been uh, discussed so two different aspect here is covered one is the exonuclease activity and another is the polymerase activity of the dna polymerase different dna polymerase so here dna polymerase 1 which is called konberg enzyme also right because arthur konberg he discovered first this enzyme so they are having 5 prime as well as the i prime to 3 prime as well as the 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity okay yaad rakhna ye puchta hai very frequently they are asking in the iit jam or jnu entrance examination as well as the other entrance examination right so which of the following enzyme have both the exonuclease activity so this is the dna polymerase one so dna polymerase one they removes the primer we have had discussion apart from that they remove the thymine thymine dimers also right okay and thymine 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 dimer formed by the UV rays, right? In the presence of UV ray, thymine thymine dimer has been formed, and this has been removed by the DNA polymerase one, right? So they 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 participate in the the uh, repair part to some extent also, right? Then polymerization activity, they polymerize in the five prime to three direction, three prime direction, and they can add hundred one thousand nucleotide per minute. So this is very slow actually. This is very slow, and processivity is also very very low of DNA polymerase one. Okay, now you come on to the DNA polymerase two. So they are having only three prime to five prime exonuclease activity, and they have the polymerase activity of five prime to three prime, and rate of nucleotide synthesis is too low. This is fifty nucleotide per minute. Okay, and they are mostly taking part in the repair mechanism DNA polymerase two. Okay. and now the dna polymer is 3 so dna polymer is i'm sorry just a minute and dna polymer is 3 dna polymer is 3 they are having why this is coming i don't know okay i'm i'm sorry i'm sorry okay okay so uh, this is dna polymer is 3 so dna polymer is 3 they are having 3 prime to 5 prime exonuclease activity right and they are having polymerizing activity which is 5 prime to 3 prime we have seen and the very important thing here is the they are very fast enzyme very fast catalyst they polymerizes approximately 2000 base pair per second see this is too high right 2000 nucleotides per second i am giving you one assignment one homework actually so by keeping the uh, this data 2000 uh, base pairs per second you just calculate the time of dna entire dna replication in the bacteria e coli right so uh, you will get approximately 40 minutes 38 minutes you will get what i am telling you you just listen carefully so if you calculate by taking 2000 base pair per second right of dna rate of replication so by for the synthesis of entire genome that means uh, 4 into 10 per 6 base pairs so you will you will get 38 minutes so please try to find out the answer that uh, we know very well that bacteria will divide in every 20 minutes right but here i am telling you or you will find that for dna replication it requires 38 minutes so what would be the the explanation for that okay you just try to calculate and try to find out the answer this is the world of internet so you will find certainly right this this is just the assignment for you 
Okay, so these are this is a comparison of all the three DNA polymerases, right? So these are the prokaryotic DNA polymerases. So now if we discuss the eukaryotic DNA polymerases, so in eukaryotes, at least five different or more than that, five different DNA polymerases are there. One is alpha, beta, gamma, and epsilon, right? Five different DNA polymerases are there in the eukaryotes, right? And uh, all of them have the different functions, right? We just have distance. So first, uh, before that, you just try to solve this question. Again, very simple question, okay? Can you tell me the answer? Just to confirm if you're listening or not. <laughs> okay, which one? C. Okay, C, nice, good. So C number is the correct answer, okay? Okay, good. So uh, now, now the these are the things which we discussed already. So no problem with that. Okay. So now we uh, just write here name of the name of some enzymes which are essential for the replication of the eukaryotic DNA, right? And I'm, I'm just telling you the functions also. You try to write it down because we have almost we finished our time. Okay. So just, sir, just I'm taking five minutes more. Uh, so, first you write ORC, there is a protein, see the replication mechanism, basic mechanism is same, but in eukaryotes, a uh, bit uh, differences are also there, right, in proteins as well as uh, in other factors. So, first factor which is responsible for the eukaryotic replica DNA replication is the ORC. This is origin recognition complex, right, this is origin recognition complex right so uh, they recognize the origin of course right name suggests us right and they start in the initiation process the second protein you just write this is the cdc6 cdc6 protein right so this is nothing but the cell division cycle 6 protein right i'm not writing the full form just you write it down i'm telling you right so cell division cycle 6 protein right cell division cycle 6 right so this protein is the part of the pre priming complex right in eukaryotes a process before the priming right primer formation which is called pre priming right so cdc6 that plays a very very important role in the pre formation of pre priming complex right and then they also, CDC6, they also helps in loading of MCM. This is another protein which is called MCM or we can say ORC, right? ORC, right? MCM or ORC. Okay. Uh, so what is MCM now? Three, four. So, uh, this is MCM, right? So MCM is the protein which is called mini chromosome maintenance protein, right? Just to write the full name, mini chromosome maintenance protein, MCM, right? Mini chromosome maintenance protein, okay? And uh, uh, fourth protein that is called CTD, CDT1, CDT1 protein, which is important protein for the eukaryotic replication. So this is the chromatin licensing protein, right? This is chromatin. So they are providing license. Naam se pata chal rahe. Chromatin licensing protein, right? So uh, or licensing factor for the DNA replication, right? So this is the part of uh, pre-replicative complex, right? Pre replicative complex this protein is the part of pre-replicative complex right and uh, another protein another protein which is called rpa this is called rpa replication protein a the full form of rpa is replication protein a right and uh, 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 the function is uh, the function of this protein they uh, they, they keeps on, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, binding of the uh, other protein or beginning of the 
we can say the beginning of the transcript uh, replication, right? RPA, replication protein A, they, they start the replication. And uh, another protein we mentioned, we can mention here is the PCNA, right? PCNA, okay. So PCNA is the uh, uh, protein which can be called a clamp loader or acts as clamp actually. What we have seen in the prokaryotic DNA that uh, DNA polymerase will be carried out up to the strand by the clamp loader, right? So they are they act as clamp, right? PCNA, okay. Then uh, we have seen the DNA polymerase, right? So different DNA polymerases are there, right? Just made DNA polymerase with the alpha, right? Alpha, beta, then gamma, okay, delta, epsilon. So here, the, the, the main DNA polymerase here in the eukaryotes are the gamma. Gamma is the main DNA polymerase which takes care of the eukaryotic DNA replication, right? Alpha, they are responsible for the priming. Yeah, priming is responsible. Hai. And uh, beta, they takes part in the repair mechanism, right? And uh, delta, uh, uh, epsilon, in sab ke baare mein bahut pata nahi hai. Aapke liye teen. For you, these are the three different proteins which are having important role in the eukaryotes. So main enzyme is the, main replicating enzyme is the gamma, right? Main DNA replicating enzyme in the eukaryote is the gamma, right? So uh, that's it, friend. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask me. Uh, I think my time is over. We exceeded by five minutes. So if you have any question, you can ask me. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir. You yeah. are audible. Yeah. Okay. So no question from any participant? Okay, you can you can ask uh, on later also. No problem. We are all we are always here to help you. Okay. So I don't know how much how much you people uh, got the points, but I tried to cover the questions which normally they ask in your examination. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. On the behalf of GSBT and Atmia University, I thanks to the sir to cover the replication process of prokaryotes and eukaryotes within a very short period of time i know that sir it's a very heavy topic and you covered it with very little time so thank you so much for being with us sir. and on the behalf of all participants i again say thank you to you yeah, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot to you as well as thanks a lot to the GSBTM at me university for giving the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, dear sir, there is one announcement. Uh, after this session, uh, Pravin sir will directly forward uh, the MCQ question that is mock test in your group. So be in a group and please check. Thank you. Okay, uh, so shall I log out, sir? No issue, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, all of you, you can now leave. And thank you. The today's session is over. <laughs>